This is Jim Pearson, Total Nerd Channel. Today I'm going to show you how to move a Windows 10 installation from a regular hard drive to a solid state drive quickly. Well, here it is, the new hard drive I shall install. And uh, I chose in the size of 2TB to replace the drive I already have. So we have this little rack from our computer and it's a little bit big. Fortunately we have this little metal thing here which we can put inside the bigger rack. We can put it in this little tray here and now we're ready to insert it. Power off and unplug your computer. Here on the motherboard you can see this. This is a SATA connector, or Serial ATA. Now this is the data connector uh, we will be using for this drive. It might be different if you bought an M2 drive, which you'll need to insert it in the M2 slot, but this is a Serial ATA drive. And here on the SATA Express, it's a different types of speeds. SATA Express is one of the quicker ones. We have SATA 3, which is 6 gigabit per second. That is also something you want to use. If you have serial uh, ATA 1, which this cable goes to, which is obstructed here, it goes to my uh, DVD writer and it's serial ATA 1. And that is a bit slow for like modern hard drives. So make sure it's uh, serial ATA 3, SATA Express, or one of the quicker ones. Insert a little cable there. Just like that. Alright, and now we see the hardware cabinet here. We can drag out this. This is my current uh, little hard drive. You can see it li right there. It's connected with power and a serial ATA cable. Let's put this back in securely. Expose the uh, serial ATA cable we connected and the power. We bring the new hard drive and connect them up. Now we can insert this one securely. And there, the SSD is installed in the system. We can now begin to migrate our entire system. So let's close this computer up and turn it on. In this little manual here you can see some basic instructions for M.2 SSD installation if that is the type you got. If you're doing this on a laptop you can see that you'll need a little adapter to connect the hard drive to be able to migrate the system to it, since you can't usually have two hard drives installed at the same time in a laptop. However, some laptops have that ability, so open it up and check that yourself. When we start the computer, we can first check if the drive even exists. Now, right click your Windows and select Control Panel or find it by search. In Control Panel, you just search for disk, and here you can see Create and Former hardware disk partitions. Launch that. Here we can see we have the disk 1, which is this one here, unallocated. This is the SSD and it's connected and working. Before cloning over the drive, there are some things we want to do to prepare. One of these things is simply get rid of a lot of unnecessary files. SSD drives may have newer firmware upgrades and this might improve the performance. So go to your manufacturer and see if they can provide you to uh, uh, download links for a new firmware basically. I'm going to use the utility tool Samsung Magician to install the new firmware. Then we also have the Macrium software. We are going to use Macrium Reflect 7 Free. Now just go to the links in the description and you find this software here. You can see this here, Reflect Free. When we are on this page, we can select Home Use. Here you're uh, requested to provide your email. This is not necessary. Click Continue. Let it download and install this software. Just like that. And we click Download. Here you click Next, accept the terms, and Next. Then you select the home version, and Next. Want to register for this, and you click Next. Desktop shortcut is something I want, yes. And just click Install. Uh, Samsung Magician is installed, and what you can do is you can go to uh, Drive Details, 
And in the drive details, you find your drive here. Here is my Samsung Evo. And here we can select update firmware. It's just basically click and OK, but it will restart the computer when you do that. So uh, do that later. Go to administrative tools and then you see defragment and optimize drives. Now, if you run a drive like me, a hard drive, HDD, spinning disk, it will defrag, it will be fragmented. And to defrag it, you go into here and you click optimize. And doing this will make it run a little smoother and it's also a precaution so nothing goes wrong. So I really would defragment a drive before copying it over. All right, defragment is done and all scans are run complete. Fantastic. So now I will update the firmware. If you don't need to update any firmware, you might as well restart the computer anyways to make sure that all the deleted files are really deleted. Anyways, I'll update this firmware, restart the computer, and then we will begin migrating the drive to the SSD. Computer has been scanned, computer has been cleaned of unnecessary files and the computer has been defragmented. Now we are ready to clone the disk using Macroom Reflect 7 Free Edition. But first, to make sure nothing changes during the process, it's best to disconnect the internet. So turn off your Wi-Fi or unplug the computer's internet. Internet is now disconnected, as you can see in the lower right corner. OK, make sure that all programs are turned off when you're doing the imaging process and don't work on your computer. Just leave it be and do nothing with Internet disconnected. Now we can start Macroom Reflect 7. Here you see the drive. And here you see the drive we want to copy to. So what we do is we click Clone this disk. Now select a disk to clone to and make sure you select the right disk. Now what you want to do is you want to drag down all of these. Then we can uh, click on clone partition properties. And here we see our primary drive here. And uh, what we can do here is we can increase and decrease the size. If your drive you're copying to is much larger, you can make this larger or smaller. When copying to an SSD, the lifespan of the SSD will be longer if you do something that's called over provisioning. That means leaving some of the space unallocated, just not formatted and just leave it be nothing on that part. And uh, the amount that you want to leave unallocated is about 10 to 20 percent. So we will go and select something around 200 gigabytes of unallocated space. Then you will click OK. And now we can click Next. We click Next. And here we can see the operation copy to partition and we copy over all these parts. We need to copy over all the parts to make sure it's a clone. If we do not copy over a part and you don't know what it's doing, something may stop working. That's why we just copy over all the parts. And then we'll click finish. It now asks us if we want to make a save of these uh, options we just selected. Now it will start to clone the system. If you're asked to confirm this override of the data to be overwritten, make sure you've selected the right drive and click continue. Now just let it copy over and leave it be. We turn off our computer and well, we open it up because now it's time to switch the drives. The easiest and best way to do this is to take the old drive 
disconnect its SATA cable, the data cable, and the power cable. Then you take the new drive, drag it out, and uh, you switch the old SATA cable, and then you instead connect in the SATA cable of the drive you're replacing. Now this drive we just replaced, we need to lay it to rest. Because if we have any type of issues with our new drive, we want the old drive to be available to us if we need to use it, if the new drive is working or fails. Because of this, I will let my drive lay unused for about a month before I write it over. Now, let's try and start a computer. You don't always have to do this, but you might need to set the boot menu. To set up the boot menu, you will need to get into BIOS, which you can do by delete. You can also go into the boot menu directly if you have that option, but I am just went into BIOS here. BIOS and features, or anything else that seems relevant, and you will find boot option. Under boot options, you want to set the boot option 1 to Windows Boot Manager. So Windows Boot Manager should be the first boot option. Then we can just click save and exit, save and exit setup. We can now let the computer boot. And there we have it. Computer successfully gets into Windows. Well, I hope that this tutorial has been very useful for you to clone over your system to a new drive. If you liked this video, please leave a like. If you really want to help the channel, you can donate. In any case, I'll see you in future videos. This is Jim from Total Nerdy Channel, signing out.